Hello, magnanimous viewers. Welcome to our program, Our Noble Lineage. Today we will take a look at the Unitarian Universalist Association, or UUA, a historically respected religious organization founded on Jewish Christian roots but without creed. The seven main principles of the UUA are the inherent worth and dignity of every person, justice, equity, and compassion in human relations, acceptance of one another and encouragement to spiritual growth in our congregations, a free and responsible search for truth and meaning, the right of conscience and the use of the democratic process within our congregations and in society at large, the goal of world community with peace, liberty, and justice for all, respect for the interdependent web of all existence of which we are a part. Dr. Russell K. Elevin is a vegan minister of Westside Unitarian Universalist Church in Fort Worth, Texas, USA. He is also a highly experienced counselor and educator. Dr. Elevin obtained master's degrees in the theological studies and in training and development, as well as a doctoral degree in counseling and education, and a doctor of ministry. A longtime higher education administrator and professor, he also holds licenses in various areas of counseling, assisting bereaved families, people with chemical dependencies, and others. In yet another caring role through which he serves others, Dr. Elevin is also a heartfelt and esteemed advocate of the ethical vegan diet. His Twitter site on the internet is well followed and full of fascinating current information on plant-based living. Dr. Russell Elevin introduced more about the Unitarian Universalist Association's significant contributions while sharing from his own inspiring personal journey. Unitarian Universalism is, in my estimation, a very progressive uh, religion, a very progressive faith tradition. Um, and when I have gone through the studies that I had gone through, studying world religions. You know, in divinity school, I studied Buddhism, I studied uh, Hinduism, I studied Native American religious traditions. When I looked at world religions, when I looked at my own path within religion, uh, Unitarian Universalism, as best I could tell, was the only place that I could really go and be authentic. Within our congregations, there are people who uh, may call themselves UU Christians, so see Jesus as a, as a wise teacher and prophet. We have uh, a certain percentage of our congregation who would call themselves UU Buddhists, and so they follow the, uh, the teachings of the Buddha. Um, we have people within our congregation who uh, follow an earth-centered spirituality, uh, a pagan spirituality, if you will. And then we have a high percentage of our congregants who are non-theistic, who do not believe in a, a supernatural power at all. They believe in science and, and how we interact with one another as human beings and making this place we're in right now as good as it can be, heaven on earth, if you will. So with that wide variety of people, with my academic background, it seemed like the place that I could go and serve uh, in the best way possible and in the most authentic way possible for myself. And I have to say, I think it's worked out fairly well. Unitarian Universalists with Christian and Buddhist backgrounds find that their respective religious roots honor the seven UU principles such as respect for the interdependent web of all existence of which we are a part. Christianity, for instance, includes the commandment of no killing and many early Christians as well as Jesus Christ lived a vegetarian lifestyle. Buddhism's five precepts likewise urge the refraining of eating other sentient beings, the Unitarian Universalist idea of the interdependence and interrelatedness of existence could also be related to the Buddhist concept of karma and the Christian belief in, as you sow, so shall you reap. Indeed, Unitarian Universalists are dedicated to social justice as they are to diversity. 
Dr. Elvin, uh, could you tell us more about the history of the Unitarian Universalist Church? Uh, some of the ways that uh, this church has led the evolution of this country and maybe the evolution of planet Earth. When you look back at our history, you'll see people like John Adams, John Quincy Adams, Thomas Jefferson. There have been six Unitarian presidents of the United States and one Universalist president of the United States. The two congregations or the two denominations were fairly similar in a, in a lot of ways. Unitarians were saying, you know, there's one God and there may be other paths to it. Jesus may be one of those paths. There may be other paths to God. Universalists were saying there is universal salvation available to us all. Now, some of the ways that I believe that Unitarian and Universalists who came together in 1961 to form the Unitarian Universalist Association is that we've been on the forefront of many progressive kinds of issues and the area of slavery in this country that's been so uh, deeply dividing and hurtful Unitarians and Universalists were some of the first people to come out and say that this institution of slavery is evil. Uh, Theodore Parker, one of our um, liberal prophets, is so far out ahead of mainstream America with regard to the slavery issue. Uh, when Martin Luther King Jr. wanted clergy on the line with him in Selma, he called the president of the Unitarian Association and said, we need your people there. And there were more Unitarian clergy and Universalist clergy proportionally uh, at the March on uh, Montgomery uh, than any other uh, type of clergy. Uh, we have also been uh, fairly consistent in our push towards equality for lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgendered people. Uh, and saying that they have worth and dignity as well. Uh, we are constantly striving uh, to try to show the worth and dignity of all humanity. How are animals viewed in the Unitarian Universalism? Mm, that's a wonderful question and something that I hope to uh, help move along in this progressive way that we've talked about with other issues. And one of the things that gives me hope uh, within Unitarian Universalism is that we are forward thinking and where other people may be reticent or hesitant to look at animals as being a part of that interdependent web or of having worth and dignity in and of themselves I think Unitarian Universalism has the potential uh, to look at that in a more progressive way within our congregations is an organization called uh, Unitarian Universalist Animal Ministry and they're available online at uuam.org. I've been part of a group of people who are creating a curriculum uh, that congregations can take part in where we hope the uh, idea of animals sharing space on this earth with us is brought to a little bit higher level. Dr. Elvin, can you tell us how you became a vegan? And if it's okay with you, uh, can you discuss some about how, how it aided in your recovery and helped you become a cancer survivor? Well, yeah, I'm really glad uh, you asked me that. A lot of times, honestly, I just forget. <laughs> I, I forget um, uh, that I have one arm or that I've gone through a major uh, uh, colon surgery uh, because of cancer. When I was 13 years old, uh, we lived on a small place, 10 acres. We had ducks and chickens and pigeons and cows. Um, and at the age of 13, I was able to look in those cows' eyes and, and realize that there was more there going on than what I had been told by other people that they couldn't feel things, that when you dehorn them, that it was like cutting our fingernails. I could tell that I'd been lied to. So while I can't claim that it lasted very long, I knew at age 13 that I shouldn't be eating animals. Um, and it was at the same time that I had cancer. Uh, it was an osteosarcoma, which is a very aggressive cancer and occurs in children. 
Uh, they say it, said that it went from my elbow to about my shoulder in six weeks, and that if we didn't do something drastic, uh, that it would take my life. So it all happened very quickly. And what, another connection that I think I made was that I really struggled for survival. I really wanted to live. And you see that with animals too. Whatever we do to them, whatever harm we put them through, that all they want to do is live. They just want to survive. So I, I struggled to survive. I went through two years of chemotherapy. And if you've known anyone who's gone through chemotherapy, this was in 1978. The drugs were much harsher than they are today. It was hell. I mean, it was really hell for two years. And I'm 13 years old, and I'm going through puberty and all of the things that go along with that, where you want to be attractive, and, and I was not. But that struggle really made me into a person uh, that is very different, I think, had I not gone through that. Having survived the bone cancer, Dr. Elevin started avoiding most meat products for many years, consuming fish and dairy on occasion. But in 2004, he was diagnosed again, this time with one of the most common fatal cancers in the United States. It was uh, colon cancer, and we had to do uh, surgery with that. When you are under the complete and utter care of the medical profession, where you show up when they tell you to show up, you lie down where they tell you to lie down, and you take the drugs or the radiation as they tell you to. I felt like I had no control. And so I started reading about ways that diet might affect cancer, particularly colon cancer, prostate cancer, in women, uh, breast cancer. Uh, the, these typical kinds of cancers that people in the United States seem to get. And I found that if I cut out all animal products, that would improve my health. And it did. My uh, weight is now in the very middle of the body mass index that it should be for someone my height. My blood pressure is, is pretty normal. My cholesterol is fantastic. Um, all of these things happened as a direct result of my diet. Now, in some ways, I'm sorry that it took that to get me where I am today. I wish I had realized uh, the harm that comes to dairy animals. I didn't know about aquatic animals. I didn't know the hell uh, that dairy animals go through. And I wish I, I wish I had made the change initially for purely the right reasons instead of sort of selfish reasons. But I've gotten there. I've gotten to the place where I believe I understand the right reasons to do this. And if, and if my cholesterol and blood pressure and weight were to go in different directions, it would not change the way I eat now. Thank you for your presence today on our noble lineage. Join us again next Sunday, July 3rd, for the second and final part of our program featuring the Unitarian Universalist Association with compassionate vegan minister Dr. Russell K. Elevin. We will explore the organization's call for ethical eating as a solution to social injustice and global warming and more. If I could hope uh, for a world that looked uh, vegan, it would be one where we have realized the limits of this planet that we live on. It would be one where everyone recognizes the inherent worth and dignity of everyone else. But it wouldn't stop there. It would also recognize the inherent worth and dignity of all sentient beings.